One of the great things about digital photography is that we can actually reuse our images in a variety of ways. We don't just have to be constrained to printing our photographs, we can actually place our images on TV, we can place them onto the web or we can output them even to things like the, our iPod or even one of the new iPads. But when we do this kind of multi-using of our photos we need to make sure that we're optimizing the pictures in order to fit the screens or the print sizes that we're working with. Photoshop Elements has a great feature inside the Organizer workspace that helps us output these images so that they're optimized to the size that we need to work with. Let's grab these several images here. I'm just going to hold down, uh, click the first one and then hold down the shift key and go through and click the last one in the grouping. And then just go to File and then down to uh, Export as New Files. And we'll see a new dialog box appear called the Export New Files dialog box. On the left hand side we have a thumbnail list of all the images that we've included and we can choose to remove any of the ones that are there or even add more if we don't have all the images that we wish to process. We can choose the file type that we're going to export. We can choose to work with JPEG if we're going out to uh, the web or out to print even if we use high quality JPEG or even out to screens it's a good choice as well. Or we can go through for and use a non-compressed uh, format like PSD or TIFF. We also have the option to choose the photo size and also the quality when we're working with JPEG. And we also have the option of looking for and finding a location. So you can see here that I have a folder selected called for printing. And we can choose the to use the original names of our uh, photos, the original file names, or put it in a common name which will be appended with a number as well. Now one of the difficulties when we're working with exporting our files is knowing what size and quality that we need to work with. So I'm just going to cancel out of here for a minute and just go look at a, um, uh, some information that I have set up just previously. When we want to actually generate uh, new copies of our images to suit different types of outcomes, we need to know some basic information and in particular the number of pixels that we need to uh, best represent those images for the screens or prints that we're working with. So here's some new screen resolutions. Sorry about the bad pun. For the iPod, the iPod screen is actually 480 by 320 pixels. So to, in order to get the best quality for your image and not have a file that's too big and therefore displays slowly on the iPod, you need to actually optimize your image to fit within that space. It can be slightly larger uh, because the iPod will then allow you to um, zoom in or zoom out from that image, but let's, that's your target uh, pixel dimensions. The iPad has got a bigger screen and we're looking at 1024 by 768 pixels. Typical web page 800 by 600 will make sure that your images are seen within even the smallest screens uh, without anyone having to scroll. If we're looking at printing, uh, we can work with 1800 by 1200 uh, pixels for a 6 by 4 inch print if you're working at the very highest quality of print. If you want to actually uh, make them a little bit smaller, so you're outputting your images, putting them on a USB stick and taking them down to the local photo store to make 6x4 inch prints, well then you can work at roughly 200 pixels per inch, which would give us a smaller dimension of 1200 by 800 pixels and still give you good quality. But this is for the absolute best quality. And if we're actually creating our images so that they can be viewed on a HD or high definition TV, then 1920 by 1080 uh, is the way that we should be actually um, setting up our images. So with this in mind, let's target our images for the iPad. So I'm just going to go back to my other photos, select all of the images that I have here, go up to File, and then down to export as new files and inside the export new files dialog I'm going to select JPEG. Where it says photo size original I'm going to um, select the 1024 by 768 preset. You can see it's already there. If you're actually working with a pixel dimension that's not listed you can go down to custom and type in the specific sizes that you want.
So if we wanted to work with the HDTV size, we can put in 1920 by 1080. And then we can actually output directly to that. But because we're going out to the iPad, I'm just going to select 1024 by 768. In terms of quality, we don't need to go to the full quality uh, with our JPEG, but somewhere up around maximum is a good uh, setting to have to balance out the size of the file along with the um, quality of that file. The lower you make this slider, the file will be smaller and therefore the image will display quickly, but the quality of the image will be degraded. The higher you make the, uh, bring the slider up, the better quality the image will be, but the bigger the file size. We then need to browse for a folder and I'll just make a new folder here and we'll call this one iPad and you can see I've got other folders here for different types of options as well and it's this folder that will actually import the images from into our iPad. Once we've done that I'm going to use a common base for my images called iPad and then just click export. Photoshop Elements goes off, drags the images in and export the items after it's changing its file size uh, file size and also compression and in this case also the file type uh, to that new folder. Now let's look at the results by just flicking over uh, to the iPad um, folder and you can see the images have been created here and renamed and sequentially renamed according to the sequence that we had set up in our um, album and you can see all of the images are sitting there with their new names let's have a look at the actual uh, file size or dimensions and you can see that the dimensions for each of the images all sit within that 1024 768 pixel dimensions so it's managed to adjust the sizes and the quality of the image and resave them off so that they're suitable for use on your iPad. This is a great way to optimize your images for a range of different purposes. And remember the originals are still within the organizer workspace in their full glory and you can go back to them at any time and use them as a basis for any new versions of the photos optimized for different types of outcomes.